Hey everyone, I'm Kelly from B&H, and in this video, we're gonna discuss a topic fundamental to understanding the basics of photography, depth of field. While we all know how important composition is to creating exciting visuals, but understanding what camera settings and tools to use in order to manipulate depth of field is crucial to creating more dynamic imagery. So let's jump right in. Now the definition of depth of field is the distance between the nearest and farthest objects in a scene that appear sharp in an image. What that means is when shooting a subject, the depth of field refers to how much of the shot seems to be in focus to the eye. Do both the subject and the background seem to be in focus or just the subject? If everything seems to be in focus, this is considered to be a deep depth of field. Comparatively, if the subject is in focus and the rest of the image is very out of focus, this is considered to be a shallow depth of field. A shallow depth of field is a valuable creative tool that helps bring attention to your subject. The quality of an out of focus area is often referred to as bokeh. The circular bokeh shape is determined by the construction of your aperture blades, as well as the focal length of your lens. This effect really makes your subject stand out and adds a particular aesthetic quality to your images, one that professionals often employ. So those are the basics, but how do we control depth of field? We have three primary variables to consider regarding depth of field. Lens aperture, the most popular way to manipulate depth of field, lens focal length, and the distance from camera to subject. Many photographers rely mainly on aperture. If you want a deep depth of field in order to see everything sharply in a scene, you'll want a small, more closed off aperture. If you want a shallow depth of field, making your subject pop out of a scene, you want a wider aperture. Now be careful because the measurement of an aperture is the f-stop. A smaller aperture is represented by a larger numerical number and a wider aperture is actually a smaller number. Another quick tip about aperture, most lenses are ideally sharp two stops below their widest aperture. So if you have a 1.4 lens, try shooting at a 2.8 to make sure your image remains sharp and clear. Let's take a look at what a difference aperture can make. In all three of these shots, the subject is the same distance from the camera and we've kept the same focal length. Notice that a higher f-stop number or a smaller aperture results in a sharper and deeper depth of field while a smaller f-stop, a wider aperture, results in a shallower depth of field, making the subject really jump out of the image. You can really see this effect when you place all three images side by side. As you're using aperture to control depth of field, you should also be aware of your camera's ISO setting. ISO used to be the rating for film sensitivity to light, but in today's digital cameras, it refers to the sensitivity setting of the camera's digital sensor, and it can help you get the best results for your aperture setting. For example, if you want a shallower depth of field in a scene that has more light, you might want to lower your ISO, making the scene darker, in order to open up your aperture, restoring a good exposure, and creating a shallower depth of field. Raising the ISO will allow you to close down or make the aperture smaller, resulting in more objects in focus. But be careful, because depending on your camera, a higher ISO can make your images noisy. So test out your camera to see at what ISO your camera seems to demonstrate visual image noise or grain. Now onto focal length. The primary idea here is that a longer focal length will demonstrate a shallower depth of field. This can be changed by using different prime or zoom lenses. Today we're gonna use a Canon 5D with a Sigma 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens with a fixed aperture. As you can see, shooting at 70 compared to around 135 and then at 200, the depth of field gets shallower from left to right as the focal lengths get longer. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why would I bother with a prime lens when a zoom offers so much more versatility? Well, most professional photographers use both. Prime lenses are typically faster, meaning they have a wider maximum aperture. And as I mentioned earlier, a wider aperture can give you a shallower depth of field to play with. However, there are many consumer, prosumer, and professional lenses that can also be used to increase or decrease your depth of field. It's all about understanding the concept. One more trick to controlling depth of field is simply moving the camera closer to the subject. This produces a shallower depth of field while moving away from the subject produces a deeper depth of field. Now, as I've explained, if you have a zoom lens, presuming it's a constant aperture like the Sigma 70 to 200 we're using today, you can always zoom into the image resulting in a longer focal length and a shallower depth of field. However, if you run into a certain situation, like you don't want your aperture to decrease as you zoom, you're at your max focal length, or you're using a prime and you can't zoom, moving closer to the subject will also decrease your depth of field. Of course, while you're moving, 
don't forget about composition. Make sure that whatever you're shooting, you think about composition in combination with depth of field. Try not to sacrifice one for the other. Well, there you have it, the basics of depth of field explained. Now go play around with these concepts and see what results you get. I'm Kelly from BH. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.